The song that came tonight this morning was a German song. Song in German. The Gute Gesen hat kein Ende, kein Ende. Seine Barmen hübt niemals auf. Es ist neu jede Morgen. Very 
is very cold in the church as it is it normally is in Austria in winter. My mother is sister, even a sister. He will say again, a sister card during the disaccusation. Would you have a bit life with us? Would you never have a heart? She see wouldn't see shall not house again the hair side with us. Very interesting way of preaching. I mean we end the preaching. So I think I have to do it this way today. What did I say? A priest, a lost black priest, who didn't buy that is very good. My dear sister and brother, I, you see, it is very good, a beautiful day. And I know that you want to go outside and enjoy the song. God be with you. That's the end of the preaching. And if it is very good, this time you you will simply say, Oh dear sisters and brothers, it is very cold inside the church and I, I don't want to keep you here because I have some mercy but the Lord do with you. And in this way, he knows how to make his own be very short. He thought you say no. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I wish we could actually reflect on this in this country. The word of Paul occurs so many times in the scripture. I think you check the number of times you have this word in the scripture. I think you have about seven or eight times. If you check it, you will see that there is a meaning that stands out, and that meaning is economic material poverty. We do not have other shades of meaning, poverty of the spirit, and all of that. We are a country where so many people are economically, naturally poor. We see that every day. Machinal over there will have his own project. Many persons interested in helping the poor will have an authority. The wrong number of people who need their attention. Those who want their fees to be paid. We those who have no money, who have nothing. Those times. Nobody will take it here. Nobody will take it to hospital. I'm not talking about the country. With innumerable rich people, 20% of Nigerians don't know what to do with money. They can afford to have a party. We have a lot of money. And interestingly also it has become, I don't know whether the calculation is right, but it has become the greatest in Africa. When I look at this particular country, the organization of things and all the people rules and all that. But it is true, indeed, just that the money is going into, huh? private. going into where? Private. Uh, somewhere, we don't know. Is it private or, private. or private public? Private. The money is going somewhere. That is actually the point. And because of this, so many people are impoverished. So many are poor in this nation. And we hear today, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. We hear that. I don't know whether it frightens us when we hear such words. And when we look around and we see the number of poor people, it should be frightening. It should frighten us. And I don't know how God will be looking at us in the face of the number of people who are poor in this country. Whose ears are open to the cry of the poor? He's been like that from the day one of his life. He's been like that since the time he became a priest. Up until today, this man, if the Lord hears the cry of the poor, then I think he has opened the ears of this particular man to hear the cries of the poor. And that is the ministry. And that is the foundation of Chikosicha, the beginning of this great enterprise, social action that has changed the life of many. I am talking about this man. I have decided to give this homely a title, interesting one. Obiora, the known, the knowable, and the unknowable. The man we can know the man we know, the man we can know, and the man we may not know. That is the title of this short from me. On the 7th of April, 1956, 
in the northern part of Nigeria in a place called Gusu. A little boy gasped and cried as the freshly polluted air of corrugated and convulsive world of indescribable trepidation hit his undefined divine face. His bright eyes darted left and right as he was struggling to comprehend the ocean. And who begin from the beginning of action of the parents, which must have been so remarkable that it resulted in the birth of such a unique child. Ojara, as she was named, revealed many signs of singularity from the very first encounter with our strange world. He must have been thinking like Zuma in Peter Abraham's mind born. These people are strange indeed. He says, his father rather, because that already at his best, I put the words of his father. On the night he was born, his mother underwent a brisk labor and had a big and safe delivery in the parlor of our Gusoko at exactly 9.40 p.m., even before the arrival of the best attendant. Look the time of your work from 9.40 p.m. You should know. Sorry to come into the world, and he has continued. At his baptism, he was to be given the name Opoha, meaning heart of the people, which later became unechanized into Obiora. And the Francis, and the boy, typical, the boy, as if in protest, released a flush of his baby urine on the face and clothes of the stubborn missionary priest. This is history. This happened. Oboha, Oropiola, and Iha Lacho are in fact semantically related. Maybe that's why you're still the format of it. There is an implication if I recall Christ that is indeed a man of the people. Oropiola is pretty at home with every class of people, every ethnic group every race, every gender, religious affiliation, cultural group, academic bent, political idiosyncrasy, psychological disposition, spiritual state, or vocational interest. Obiola is a tool everywhere. We are talking about a man who has shaken hands with the most powerful of earth and also eating with the so-called wretched of the earth. Man who interacts with the poor, traversing the world landscape like a trapador from Buckingham Palace to the inviolable high walls of Kiev. He's here to tell you that he's here to talk to you. I don't know any prominent person in the world he does not know. Yet, yet, Ubiora is in love with the poor. With orphans, you can see some of them here. The top down trodden, the high power, the pauper, the subjugated, the sick, the humiliated, widows and widowers, the imprisoned, the lame, the blind, and all levels of physical challenge. He is at home. Nobody is at home with all shapes and colors of humanity. Like his name is Petro, Francis, this power called the Lord. He echoed me to see the new orphanage and school he gave to the others. A beautiful school indeed, a delight of him my eye. After entertaining my eyes and feeling my seemingly insatiable curious soul, he took me into the orphanage. Like a hall of bees, the little boys and girls zoomed to him, jumping up and down. Going on all fours, clapping the hands. She appeared to be a kind of prophetic ecstasy. The beauty of his face and the sparkle of the eyes at that moment were the five appropriate manifestations. If you want to see how handsome Korea is, go with him to one of his other Look at him. And he has got it. 
nothing can change the man to He said, they will have something. He broke into songs with the little ones. You could pay anything in this world to watch such a live drama. This is our brother, our friend, Obiola. Obiola has never been imprisoned, at least not to my knowledge. But ironically, he has never stopped visiting prisons. He is a regular visitor in all shapes and sizes of prisons with different degrees of punitive arrangements of human misery and degradation. And all these are the poor and helpless which he hears in the deepest recesses of his soul. Besides, for many years he has worked as a prison chaplain. I believe it is one of the ex-convicts whom he had helped, but who was among those sent to assistant Obiora that actually saved him from being slaughtered during the Chimarogi administration. Wow. I hope you know this stuff. Yes, clap for God, clap for God, because it's a, it's a great thing. The more they are ready to kick him, and one of them said no. We children she went to school, knowing full well that the shortest road to abject poverty is a disturbing emptiness. There is a boy in his house. He took this particular boy from his village. When he met the boy, he asked him whether they were being taught at school. You know what the boy survived was? Oh, he immediately took the boy, brought him to his house, and sent him to school. In fact, Monsignor Professor Oberike has saved many families from poverty by making education possible for their children. In Munich, Far away Germany is a top Nigerian medical doctor from Omo Bandiaga, somewhere end of the world. Obiola took him from his wretched family background, brought him to his house and paid disease until he became a medical doctor. Paul <laughs> is now in Germany a top medical consultant. The number of those empowered by Obiola again through education is needed. If I ask those who have been empowered by Obiola in this holy gathering to raise their hands, you will be surprised to see the, a sea of hands raised in a global event. teaching and delivering lectures everywhere. He is a professor of our university, Garfield Koya University, which is now his academic home. Germans will call it Academic Heimat. His publications, which he uses to battle against ignorance, span over 117 publications. 117. <laughs> the idea of Omuchin Emere Pro Credit Microfinance Bank, which he co founded, he founded or co founded, you always say co founded, I don't know which one is correct now, came from a soul attuned to hearing the cries of the poor and finding solutions. This particular bank, with over 3 billion naira asset and 22 branches, is one of the most successful community banks in Nigeria. Only <laughs> God knows how many people have been raised from the ashes of horrendous poverty and social misery and subjugation and thus helped to smile again among their fellow human, humans through the services of Komochina Emere Community Bank. Love of the poor is Obiora's greatest motivation for founding Sijab. We are celebrating 30 years of Sijab today. Since its foundation 30 years ago, Sijab has been involved in over hundreds of development projects, hospitals, including in Tassobi, in the Manafofo, low-cost housing, when the number comes to mind, schools, orphanages, thousands of scholarships. 
Dr. K. Tugane was able to give us the history of this job and did a good job. Kudos to you, our own Director of Academic Planning, Dr. K. Tugane. So the only that we know is our brother, the only that we know is our friend, our father, our teacher, our priest, our benefactor, motivated by the cries of the poor in his, in his countless, innumerable, social, economic, political, religious, cultural, and academic actions. That's the Obiola we know. The knowable, the Obiola we can know. That's the second segment of the song. Obiola's loquacity is unmatchable. Obiola is an orator. He talks about everything. Sometimes you wonder whether he has any secrets. I am sure that if he was married, his wife would always put her hand, fingers across his mouth to prevent him from verbally drowning the social setting. So you can understand why his best name is Okuroha everywhere, which I use my linguistic license to change to Okuroha. God bless is your mouth. That's what I said to him. Austrians have a brother, a man, a word, a word, a dictionary. I think Obi is an exception. Record a famous speech at the college was a masterpiece. But I tell you, the only part of that speech which our politicians still remember is the word. One day, Obi prayed. During the traditional manifesto, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. I said, Chuku Bochu. Chuku Bochu. I laughed. I laughed out my heart and said to him, Obi, you are really the address of the man who passes. Because he does make them just pray to come to the top of his We can know him because he talks and reveals himself in his fucking and sin. The unknowable. The more you think you know him, the more you are slapped by unknown hands of a piece of ignorance. In the Russian Libby of his linguistic and very of philosophical space, you may get lost in that space. You feel like one of the astronauts landing on the endless space of you have the feeling of knowing the man. Then again, you are left wondering at yourself and the quantum of the ignorance like people. I understand a man who knows a lot about you and pretends of yes as if he does not know you well. Tell me how you can just say that. How can a man who knows how to give every discussion a twist of continuity, even the driest of human discussions? How can you know a man who will have breakfast with you in the morning? And in the next moment, he's telling you, Mogo, how can you know a man who smiles and laughs have remained the same for 60 years, unchanging, with all now the foreign prices of money and no working budget? How can you know a man whose speed of reading is reminiscent? of the German word Blitzkrieg, who knows how to recall out of any human problem at the time of it. And transmogrifying the rest without losing human communicativeness. <laughs> how can you know a man who, when you think he's retiring, goes to Geneva to head one of the biggest intellectual bodies and become the first black person to hold such an enviable position and drove a lot of the How do you know such a person? How can you know a man who has lost track of his, in his numerous titles, awards, and recognitions? How can you know such a deeply, deeply spiritual man who, during his ordination, tells Jesus, it is now between you and me, we either stand together or fall together? <laughs> Tell me how you can know such a person. How can you know a man who is not just a human being? but an extraordinary expression of humanity. How can you know such a man? 
have simply only remains an enigma. The world will one day say, there was a man very well known, pretty loyable, but somewhat an enigma. Celebrating today, my dear sisters and brothers, is a man whose life continues to remind us of the power of the gospel and the holy stubbornness of Christian believers. We must obey God rather than human beings. The apostles were humiliated and warned not to repent to Christ, not to preach in his name. Yet they refused to be cowed down. On one occasion, they even rejoiced that they were considered worthy of suffering because of him. Not even the assassination attempt on the life of Obi would make him stop working. No accident, no amount of suffering, assisted, nothing has changed about my brother Obi. Ever dynamic, smiling, the peculiar Obi smiles and walking in his usual style. As I look at him, I know that nothing can stop us from preaching the word of God. No Boko Haram, no flooding herdsmen, kidnappers, fresh scarcity, rising dollar, blah, blah, blah. Nothing will stop us from preaching Christ. Obi once said to me, if, you get, if your car gets damaged, jump into another car or vehicle and continue your journey. That is all for you. Move on. As today's gospel says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Obi, your life is a living testimony that you believe in Christ. When you take Christ at your ordination, it is between you and me. We understand together or put together. We express such a faith that is rare in our world. It is so touching to me. Whoever is close to you realizes the value you attached to the Eucharist and to the Lord. You will never be on the road without saying you are full of You believe in Christ. And because you believe in Him, eternal life will be your reward after a long life. And I underline a long life. You will live long, very long, because you come from the family of those who are not in a hurry to leave this world. God bless you. I like to say